better off for it. Another great story, and I'm going to kind of feed, feed you guys from a fire hose this afternoon. You can take notes, you can talk about it later, you can go to our website, OperationRescue.org, to see all these stories and more, but these stories have a point. There was an empire here in Southern California, it was called Clinica Medica para Mujer de Hoy. Michael, were you arrested there? How many people were arrested in front of the Clinica Medicas? Here's, okay, here, here, here are the draft dodgers over here. Okay. Uh, Clinica Medica was, was the sort of abortion clinics that would hand out, they would hire people to hand out $10 off coupons in the low Hispanic neighborhood, low income Hispanic neighborhoods for uh, $10 off on their abortions. And they had a string of the shoddiest, seediest abortionists ever known to mankind. Well, when I took over Operation Rescue in 1999, this was our very first project. We began focusing in on every one of their abortionists, and they were dirty. Nicholas Bramer, you know, remember Bramer, and Mohammed Dia, and uh, Turnip Seed, and Philip Rand, and uh, gosh, a, a whole bunch of them, I can't remember their names. Uh, some of them were rapists, some of them had uh, negligence lawsuits a mile long. Anyway, at the end of the day, seven abortionists lost their licenses, and every single one of them couldn't practice medicine anymore. One abortionist was forced to quit. And at the end of the day, and at the, the end of the day, Bertha Bugren on the left there, you can see her wearing her stethoscope around her neck, was the last one holding the keys. The only problem was Bertha didn't have a medical license. She was still doing the abortions. Well, you can see her over there on the right, because she's now serving seven years concurrent sentences in Los Angeles and San Diego counties, and all 11 of these abortion clinics are closed. Every single one. I want to point out Courtney's life, our dear friend Courtney there on the far right, who I'm dedicating, I think, just the rest of my life to continue doing this pro-life work. She's just a dear saint. We love, we love Courtney. All 11 of these abortion clinics are closed. Well, anyway, emboldened with that success, we moved our offices to uh, Wichita, Kansas in 2002. This is one of my favorite pictures of George Tiller because it's his mugshot. That's when he was arrested and arraigned. When they arrested George Tiller, it was one of the best days of my life. When he was murdered, it was one of the worst days of my life. And here's why. Because that person stole the hard work of good people out from underneath us. We had focused in on George Tiller for eight years. We put him on the ropes. You'll see in a coming slide here how the numbers of abortions all over the country were starting to go down by 2002. But by uh, the time we arrived in Wichita, Kansas, they were all going up. George Tiller had tripled the size of his abortion facility since 1991 to 2002. Tripled the size. He had tripled the number of abortions. He was bringing in women from every single country in the world to do late-term abortions. And it was my theory, my thesis, that we could not, never end embryonic stem cell research. We could never end cloning. We could never end abortion in the first trimester if we couldn't shut down George Tiller. So we started to put the screws to him. He told the Wichita Eagle in 2001 that he felt he had more support in the community than any other organization. And if he failed to gain that support, he would leave. Well, over the next several years, we began to put the, the pressure on him. We exposed the death of Kristen Gilbert, who he brutally murdered, died of sepsis within 48 hours of her abortion. We brought him to the Supreme Court three times, the Kansas Supreme Court. Three citizen-led grand juries. Phil Klein indicted him on 30 criminal counts, only to be thrown out the next day by a very liberal district attorney, another gatekeeper. He was finally charged with 19 criminal charges and acquitted because the district attorney, or the attorney general rather at that time, had a very low view of the case and really threw it. And then, uh, 10 minutes after he was acquitted, the Kansas Board of Healing Arts indicted him on yet another 11 charges. And at that point is when he began to relinquish his medical license and was dealing with the Kansas Board of Healing Arts to, to uh, give up his medical license and retire from the business. Unfortunately, just a few days later, someone fatally took his life and took with it all the hard work of the pro-life movement had attained over the last several years. But the good news is Kansas is a different state. We met the political corruption head on. Sebelius, who you now know as our Health and Human Services Secretary, is gone. She protected the abortionists. The Kansas Board of Healing Arts has been completely transformed. We cleaned house. All the physicians, the lead attorney, Mark Stafford, Larry Buning, the former director, have all been fired and replaced with pro-life officials. The Department of Health and Environment that controlled the reporting data, the TOPS data, on abortion services, once 
would never return my call. Three weeks ago, they called me to testify in Topeka in regards to the new clinic regulations. That shows a huge difference in the state of Kansas. Pro Can Do, the largest political action committee in the state, is now completely defunct and gone. You might recognize this abortion clinic on the left. If you can read the sign, it says there's a garage sale on 52606. It was going out of business, you see. We put them out of business and we bought that building. The picture on the right is a renovated building with a huge crisis pregnancy sign. There was a, a picture of a free sonogram for our TPC next This is now our national headquarters. When we moved to Kansas, there were nine abortion mills. Today, there are three. The new laws, once we get past these courts, will leave two. And the other one, the Planned Parenthood, has 58 criminal charges pending against it. And it is my prayer that by the end of the year, next year, there will be no abortion clinics in the state of Kansas. That's how you make a You can look here, the late term abortions in Kansas dramatically decreased from 01 at their peak down to zero. Down to zero. Wichita, once known as the abortion capital of the world, is now the pro-life capital of the world. There's not one single abortion clinic in the city of Kansas, the city of Wichita, and it's the largest metropolitan city in the country without an abortion facility. <laughs> That's because activism drives legislation, friends. You are the grassroots. Your politicians will listen to you when you speak. We cannot leave them hanging out on the limb lot like they did to Phil Klein. You need to, support, you need to support your legislators. Here's what happened after George Tiller was put out of business and that abortion clinic was closed. Leroy Carhart came to town and said, I'm gonna open up that abortion clinic. We said, no, you're not. We got the local hospital to, to, to deny him hospital privileges. He said, well, I'm going to open up within 25 miles. We circulated flyers to every city within 25 miles. He then said, I'm going to open up in Kansas. We started dropping pr national press releases. He said then, I think I'll just stay in Nebraska. Really? I said, just fine. So we went to Nebraska to chase after him. This is his abortion clinic. We, hold, we held a big rally. And after that rally, we met with a senator, Mike, I'm sorry, Representative Mike Flood. And Mike Flood proposed an interesting new piece of legislation that would ban late-term abortions based on fetal viability and fetal pain. That passed overwhelmingly and was signed by the governor in the state of Nebraska. It kept Mr. Carhart from doing late-term abortions in the state of Nebraska. And the next year, 17 other states passed similar legislation. That's success. That's how we measure success. Abortion clinics closed. Now this is a perfect storm except for the fact that Laura Hope Smith died. It was a tragic story. Laura Hope Smith could have been with us today, except she died from the same pain medication that Michael Jackson did, and really the same negligence in a physician. The abortionist, Rapine Ostenhan, didn't even know that she had died until after he had completed the abortion. That's how negligent he was. He, he did not have resuscitation equipment, equipment. He didn't have a pulse monitor. But you know what? We found out about this and we began to make this story national. We contacted that district attorney that did not want to prosecute this man because he was a Harvard fellow, a very respected man in his community. But we insisted and we worked with uh, Laura Hope Smith's mother, Eileen, filed a complaint against the medical board. And the short story is for us, long story for Rapine, is that he went to jail he was wearing the orange jumpsuit. He paid $2 million, and both of his abortion clinics were closed. After Rapine was convicted, it, ships, it sent shockwaves to district attorneys around the country that were thinking about prosecuting abortionists, and we had complaints in after several of them. One of them was Stephen Chase Brigham on the far left. 
he was caught botching a, a horrible abortion. The woman was barely saved, thanks to Johns Hopkins University. He and Nicole O'Reilly on the right there and Shepherd's, uh, George Shepard there next to him, we didn't have a picture of him to put in there, were all remanded uh, by the medical board, lost their license, and the, the abortion clinic is closed. And interestingly enough, on the same day they had an emergency suspension order, uh, Romeo Ferrer on the far right, we had been complaining about a death for over six years. He had murdered a woman six years ago. And on the same day they ordered an emergency suspension order for the first three, they threw in Romeo Ferrer too. His abortion clinic is closed. He's out of business. guy. He made huge news here last year. I'm sorry, earlier this year. It's Kermit Gosnell. Who's heard of Kermit Gosnell? That's right. This guy, this guy needs to be the poster child for the pro-abortion movement. These, the abortion cartel want to run from him, but he is of them. He is the abortion cartel. The prosecutors walked into this place and said it was a charnel house, a house of death. Interestingly enough, five of the perps there on the right have all pled guilty, uh, some of them to third degree murder, and plan to testify against Kermit Gosnell. This is a first degree murder case, friends. And what makes this so historic, what makes this so important, not only does Gosnell face the death penalty in this case, but these pictures of his victims the, the murder counts, one count for, kill, for killing uh, Karamaya Monger up on the upper left, uh, again, another overdose of sedation. But the other counts of murder are all from pre-born babies that were born alive and he murdered after the fact. This represents not pro-life propaganda, but a grand jury report from a pro-abortion district attorney. That's the success the pro-life movement is having. If we're not talking about Kermit Gosnell every day, we are not defeating the abortion industry. Right after Kermit Gosnell uh, was arrested and made national news, we had been dueling with this guy down here in Southern California called Andrew Rutland. He actually had the audacity to write a letter to the Attorney General of the United States, Eric Holder, the Attorney General of California, uh, various congressmen and the local media and said there was a grand conspiracy between Troy Newman and the local prosecutors to get this guy uh, indicted on murder and get his medical license revoked. He had actually killed somebody in 2009 and then again in 2000, I'm sorry, 2002 uh, for the death of two newborn babies and then in 2009 he killed Ying Chen. The board filed a complaint against Rudman and so sought an emergency suspension but it was dismissed, and it wasn't until after Kermit Gosnell that they actually went back to the medical record and changed the complaint to homicide charges against the woman he killed. He surrendered his medical license January 26, just a couple of weeks after Kermit Gosnell. He's no longer practicing medicine either. This is something you can do. These are things, these are projects, it, as we say in our office, it's not rocket surgery. You can do these things. This is practical, everyday investigations that you can do, that, and we can all get the wheels rolling on these. It just takes time and energy and a little bit of passion. We went down to Texas with the help of survivors. Yep, we went down to Texas. We've got a few survivors. Spent three months down there looking at abortion clinics, looking in their trash cans, going into their clinics, recording the phone calls, and what we found was an amazing 14 different abortion clinics that were in various violations. We looked up the laws, we researched what uh, the, the regulations were on the abortion clinics, the different entities, whether it was the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, the Texas Board of Medicine, the Attorney General, or the Medical Board, uh, and which complaints went to whom. Well, last week, uh, two Fridays ago, I was in Texas testifying against Five of these abortionists, the other five hearings are coming up in a couple of months, but five, there's, there's a record-breaking 10 abortionists that are under investigation right now. But the point is, many of these entities will not act unless they're prompted. They're bureaucrats, they're courts, they're the abortion uh, gatekeepers, and they're keeping abortion clinics open. But they will do your bidding. 
if you force them, if you support them, if you support your legislatures, and you support the laws that are already written on the books. The last 30 days, just check this out. This is how fast we're moving. We're not celebrating with another one bites the dust once every three or four months. We're doing it almost on a daily basis. In fact, I'm thinking about putting it on our answering machine. <laughs> just had this recording go round and round. We testified against five abortionists in Texas. We gave testimony in support of tougher clinic regulations. As I said, they actually called me where they wouldn't return my call a few years ago. We attended the, crit the criminal hearings for Planned Parenthood. Now, if you guys saw this in the news, the shredder gate, the, the administrations, these bureaucrats actually shredded the documents of a criminal investigation against Planned Parenthood. And the district attorney was forced to dismiss 23 felony charges. But the good news is, 58 misdemeanors are moving forward. It's the only prosecution against Planned Parenthood in existence and the only one that's happening right now. We're hoping on a hearing sometime in the spring on that one. We supported the prosecution of Kristen Newhouse. And the, the, the importance of Kristen Newhouse is that she was the one that was helping George Tiller violate the law. She was the one that was saying that George Tiller had a, uh, uh, a medical reason to do late-term abortions, contrary to Kansas law, that there was a substantial and irreversible harm that would come to the woman. She signed off on him. She's going to lose her medical license early next year. We gave supplemental testimony in the Maryland Carhartt case as well. Here's one of my favorite guys here. Okay, that's Seth Williams right there on the left. Seth Williams is the district attorney in Philadelphia. He's actually a pro-choice Democrat, but he ran on a platform of change. He says, we're not the old school Democrats. We're coming into power. We're going to clean up the corruption. And he's the one that led the grand jury in, I think, what was that, Jill, a 360-page indictment? It was amazing. You've got to go online and read this thing. It's Again, it's not written by pro-lifers. It's written at the hand of a grand jury that was being led by a pro-choice Democrat. Seth Williams is one of my new heroes. And he's the one that convinced five of these other defendants to plead guilty in this case and testify against Kermit Gosnell. So again, the gatekeepers are district attorneys, they're attorney generals, sometimes medical board, health boards, environmental quality boards, legislators sometimes can stall things, but they can be your friends, judges and elected officials. We've got to support our friends. Now here's the bottom line. You want evidence? How? Let me get some guesses from the audience. 1991, there's 2,176 abortion clinics. I'm sorry, 1991. Did I say 91? 1991? We're in 2011. It's 20 years later. How many abortion clinics do you think are left? Give me a guess. 1,000. 1,000. How many? 800. Any other guesses? It's like 800. 500? 1,000? Anybody else in the back? 700. And the total is 674 abortion clinics, friends. 70%. 70%. Seventy percent. Come on, seventy percent of the abortion mills in America have closed for good and have not reopened. That is the most. And by the way, you remember those CPCs, those crisis pregnancy centers that we could barely find on the street corners? They now outnumber the abortion clinics four to one. We can't just shut down abortion clinics. Listen to this, we can't just shut down these abortion clinics. We've got to replace them. We've got to replace them. We've got to be better than them. We've got to serve the women better than Planned Parenthood. We've got to remove and replace the abortion industry. That's our goal. Now, you're saying, oh my gosh, what can I do? Can we make this happen? I say yes. Just simple principles, okay? Here's how, here's how we do this. And here's how you can do it. By the way, I think if I was in the military after 20 years, I could retire. I think that's, I, I'm looking to retire. 
I, I never wanted to be a full-time pro-life activist for the rest of my life. I thought we could get this done in a couple of years. I was naive, I know. If I just told a few people how bad abortion was, if I talked to a few pastors, if I kind of worked at the city hall a little bit, they'd understand how bad abortion was, and it would be over in just a couple of years, max. Fortunately, I was wrong. But we're on the verge, as you can see, of total annihilation of the abortion cartel. But we need the next generation, the next wave of influence, the next recruits, the next Jeff Whites, Walter Hoyts, Troy Newmans, Brian Kemper. Believe it or not, Brian Kemper is not a teenager. I know, he likes to act like one. Who else shows up in t-shirts and no shoes? Oh, I'm so glad you weren't shoes today, Brian. Did you shave? Okay, I'm glad you're old enough to shave. Okay, number one, educate yourselves. We need to know the laws that are on the books better than your legislators, better than the police, better than the district attorney, and then we need to go and teach them what the law says. And if the law doesn't say what we want it to say, we need to change it and make it right. And that's what we did in Kansas. We're regulating these guys out of business. You gotta know, be a professional. We need to be more professional in the abortion industry. These guys have got thousands of people that work full time and are paid very well, working to continue abortion every single day. We need twice as many, three times as many people working in the pro-life movement, and we need to be educated. Become an attorney, draft pro-life laws. Get educated, folks. Number two, document. We need to document the abuses of the abortion industry. When they kill a woman, document it. Get that 911 call and put it on YouTube. Go down to the district attorney's office and tell them about it. 40 Days for Life visuals are my favorites. Not because they stay up all night and they're way more sacrificial than I am, but because they call me and they tell me what is going on at this abortion clinic and the abuses that they found out. And by the way, carry a video camera, please and a camera because you could catch an abortionist red-handed axe murdering somebody in the alley and unless you got a picture or video, it never happened. Expose. Once you find out these atrocities, expose them. Ephesians 5.11 says, have nothing to do with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them or reprove them. I live by that verse. Dark holes and, and, and keeping things secret is only good for cockroaches and mold. Sunshine's a natural disinfectant. I had a college dorm room, I flipped the light on, all these cockroaches would go scurry. I learned to sleep with the lights on, folks. And these abortionists need to as well. Okay, report. Now, the worst enemy, hear me now, the, the enemy of the abortion cartel is the report you file as a proper agency. You file a report with the medical board, you can put that abortionist out of business like Philip Rand or Bramer or uh, Turnipseed and, and countless others. We can get their licenses revoked. We need to document what they're doing wrong and put the complaint form in the right hands and follow through with it. And that's the last one, we need demand enforcement. If your district attorney isn't prosecuting these abortionists, they should and you need to make sure they, they are. You follow up with them. And if they won't do it, replace the DA. If the bureaucrat isn't doing his job, put a complaint form, again, a complaint form in against him or her. Get them fired and get the next person in. We're doing that in New Mexico. Stacy Hart, the board of the New Mexico Board of, uh, head of the New Mexico Board of Medicine, is failing to investigate an abortion clinic out there. We've got 5,000 signatures on a petition to have her removed. And you know what? The new pro-life governor is saying, absolutely. She needs to go. If you don't follow up with this, the attorney general told her, if you don't follow up with this, your job's on the line. All right. Educate, document, expose, report, and demand enforcement. And the next time we see each other, next time next year at the second annual international pro-life conference, we're going to be down to, what, 300, 200, zero? Come on! Zero! That's how we measure success! We want zero abortion clinics! Zero baby still! Come on! All right, thank you so much. So great to be here.
Thank you, Steph. God bless you. Thank you, Steph. We know you did all the work.